Hi guys, welcome to another time out today. I am Adita Kela Logorante and I'm excited to be here because we're going to be talking something really interesting and really enlightening as well. So today we're going to be talking rebuilding the economy of Nigeria's most vulnerable women post pandemic. Now we know how much the pandemic has hit on every sector and even those that are average income earners of course they still felt the heat let alone those with low income so that's what this conversation is going to be boiled on we have one particular person coming to you know help ghana this conversation she is actually in kim okocha she's a nigerian social entrepreneur and activist who founded mama money a fintech social enterprise that empowers poor rural and urban slum women with free vocational skills and mobile loans. She is the 2016 winner of the LEAP Africa Social Innovators Program, SIP, by Union Bank. Please join me in welcoming her. I cannot wait to have her join so we can talk about this. Hi, good to see you again. <laughs> Thanks for having me again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just going to try to pin this topic this time around so that a lot of people can see. So the topic is rebuilding the economy of Nigeria's most vulnerable women post-pandemic. So, um, of course, this is my guest, Nkem Okocha. So I'm just going to read a, a brief profile. She's a Nigerian social entrepreneur and activist who founded Mama Money, a fintech social enterprise that empowers poor rural and urban slum women with free vocational skills and mobile loans. She is the 2016 winner of the Leap Africa Social Innovators Program, SIP, by Union Bank. Thank you so much Thank for being you. a part of the conversation again. Uh, so um, we're just going to take this from the very start because a lot of people are joining now so they can also enjoy the conversation. So pretty much you've, you've done a whole lot of amazing stuff with the Mama Money. I mean, you've trained 6,000 women, 18,000 plus children have, have impacted indirectly and over 100 communities have been affected by Mama Money. So how did you get on this journey? Okay, like I shared earlier, um, I started Mama Money due to my background. I had a widowed mother who... Um, did not have skills to start a business because she was a full-time housewife. So immediately my father died. The responsibility of taking care of the children just fell on her. And there was no form of support from anybody until um, somebody came and gave her money to start a small business. So for me, as a young girl, I saw what we, the challenge that we had. So sometimes we could not eat. For me, there was a time I had to go and work as a house help, I had to walk in the streets of Lagos just to get money. So I did not want any child to go through what I had gone through. So I said, when I have a lot of money, I'm a millionaire, I'm going to empower a lot of women. But that was not forthcoming until mm -hmm. I resigned from my job. I had a job and I was not feeling fulfilled. So while going to the small business that I had, in the morning, I saw a lot of women in my community, Okokumaiko, City, than I do. And I kept on wondering, why are your children not in school? Your children are jumping up and down, and you are sitting down idle. She said, no, nothing to do, no money. So every day I passed, I kept on seeing this, and it kept on bugging me. And I said, this cannot continue. So I took the little money I had. I reached out to my pastor, and I told him I wanted to use the space for a zonal center. I wanted to use it to train women. I printed our flyers and I went into the streets, my community, and I started sharing flyers. If a woman, you want to be empowered, you are Christian, you are Muslim, anything you say, but you just want empowerment, come. And basically that's how I started. And we had over 70 women, the first training wow. that we did. Yes. So, wow. um, so that's how we started. Then I started reaching out to women in other communities to when we saw the impact so for me i had my own challenges it's not that i really had the money but my husband too like i shared was like 
we we are trying to manage here, woman, and they are using the small money we have to empower other women who have husbands. But when we started seeing um, the impact of the work we were doing, so women that used to sit idle, they now had small businesses. They were now busy. So um, it, it supported, and that's how, how we started. Wow, well done, well done. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, you know, not, not only do you help uh, train women, you also disburse grants to them and you help um, their small businesses as well and you provide mobile loans to them too. So how? just t take us through, how has the journey been so far? Okay, so at Mama Money, we seek to uplift low-income women from poverty and we do that through three channels. So the first one is the skill development and it involves vocational skill training, um, business development training. So when we are teaching them customer service, in pigeon so that these women can talk to their customers properly how to brand their businesses teaching them market research in pigeon so that's what we do financial literacy training for them to know the kind of loans they should assess even if it's not from us so how to manage their business properly so that's for the skill building then we mm -hmm. provide access to finance so on our platform mamamoney.org we get Pre-COVID, we um, used to get individuals come there. You have twenty thousand, you have thirty thousand, you have fifty thousand, you have one million. You give it to us, then we pull it together and we give it to women in different communities to um, run their businesses. So they pay back after six months, and we take this money and we give it back to the people who gave us this money. So that's what we used to do pre-COVID. But um, post-COVID, we discovered that most of these women, if you give them these loans, because we went out, we reached out to them again, that this money is not going to come back because they spent all their business money. They need mm -hmm. real support. So we started giving the grants. So that's providing access to finance for them to restart their businesses. That is um, the second channel. So the third channel, during the course of our work, we discovered that not everyone wants to start a business. Some even want to start a business, but due to culture, religion, they can't leave their environment, they can't leave their community. So we created a factory where we produce a liquid dishwash called Levanta, which means to lift up in Spanish. So we, we, we produce this dishwash and we only work with women. We use women as distributors. So the three channels are skill development, access to finance, and um, job um, employment in, in the factory. So that's how the journey has been so far for us. So, so far, we've been able to reach over 7,000 women wow. and across, the, uh, across different communities, so impacted them. So averagely, most of these women have four to five children. Wow, well done. I'm just, Thank I'm you. amazed by the feat you've accomplished. Well done. But you know, what, what criteria do you use in um, identifying women who actually need the assistance? So for us, we work in this community. So we actually seek communities that have most of these women. So we go into their communities, we talk to the women, we ask them what they need, what their problems are. Then we now say, okay, what skills can we come and teach women in this community that when we teach them, they'll be able to start immediately and they can sell within their um, communities or maybe immediate communities around. So that's what we do. So we identify these women, we know, um, and these women, um, for people know, now know us over seven years doing what we do. So people actually also reach out to us and say, this community, I think they, they have more of these women that you work with. So um, people reach out to us and we take this, um, the, we, we reach out to women in the communities that have been recommended to us. And these women do word of mouth. So mm -hmm. a woman, they, she knows her friends that, husband has died that does not have food to eat. So they'll say, I'll go and meet Mama Monio. So we have a dedicated line where women can, can, can also reach us with. So that's how that we go. We actually go into their communities to, to seek them out, to find them out. Yeah. And okay. we do baseline that's interviews great. for them. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's incredible. Yes. 
Oh, great. So um, during the pandemic, of course, a lot of people were hit by the pandemic. It's a global one. And, you know, it, it was even difficult for average income earners, let alone low income earners. So tell us particularly from your experiences, what, what, how hard would you say the effect of the pandemic is, or should I say was, on low income earners, women to be specific? Yeah. It was, um, it really hit them bad. I think they are the worst hit because we saw most of the women that um, already left, would I say, that poverty line. So women that couldn't feed their children before, that are now feeding their children. They had small businesses that were using to sustain themselves. We saw most of them after the first week start reaching out to us that they wanted food. Like I shared earlier, we had a woman who, who, um, herself and her children were drinking water for three days. So we have women, different women with different stories who could not feed. So they reached out to us and we had to start providing food palliative. So we had to start giving them food. So women who we thought, okay, we've helped, so they, 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 they are now good. They, they are now good to go. But this mm -hmm. pandemic brought them back again. So mm -hmm. it was really hard. So we had to um, during that lockdown, since the pandemic started, we've been able to reach over 1,300 women in different communities. So we reach out to them, give them um, food materials, hygiene materials. So that's what we've done so far. Mm, well done. But given the right, the right financial capacity, what do you think you would have done differently? Okay, so for us, um, we had a lot of women reaching out to us from outside Lagos. So um, when we give these food items, we post on social media and we saw women reaching out to us that, Mama Money, when are you coming to Enugu? Mama Money, when are you coming to Ibadan? When are you, we need help here too. So we, if we had the right funding, we had the right partnership, we'll be able to scale the impact to reach more women across Nigeria. Because like there's an initiative that we started um, recently after the COVID-19 pandemic, um, like I said, the funding part. So right now we'll reach out to women in five communities. So we're helping these women to restart their businesses. We'll reach out to women in Kano, in Kaduna, in Oyo State, in Ogu State, and in Lagos. And we are seeking for partners to help us scale this. So if you go to our social media page, if they go there, you see stories of these women. So these are women that have lost hope. That Hello? Hello yeah, I can, can hear you, Kwan. Yes, I can hear yes. you, so, Okay, so we've been able to um, give them help. So um, with the right source of... Um, production. Oh, that's, you said with yeah. the right source of uh, financial oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> with the right source of um, 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 funding partners, we'll be able to scale our impact. Oh, that's, that's incredible. Well done. So um, I, I wanted to ask, what, what should one be doing now to cushion the effect on women now and the nearest future? Looking at the sorry? current health pandemic, I said, what 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 is that thing that one should be looking at doing to cushion the effect of this pandemic now the effect of it now on women and even in the nearest future what what exactly do you think one should be looking at doing okay uh what uh, i think we should be looking at doing is supporting these women helping them to get back on their feet and that's what I think we should be doing. So always constantly reaching out to these women. Like I shared earlier, once we identify a woman, when we help her once, we don't just leave her. So we are with mm. her through the journey. So if there's any help that is coming, we help look for partners that can help, even if it's with children's school fees, if it's with mm. um, feeding. So we always constantly need to help these women so that they're able to run a sustainable business because if they're able to run a sustainable business, they'll have um, um, savings, 
And one thing that we've done also for most of these women is they have multiple streams of income. So we've taught them, even if you have a petty business, you must have a skill. And they know, okay, there's this organization that they can run to for help. So having organizations like us, people support us, so that when issues like this arise, we have funding, we have the capacity to reach out to these mm. target beneficiaries. So that's what mm -hmm. I think we should do, giving these women the, every support that they need to, to, to restart their lives. Because if big blue chip companies can be shutting down, so how do we mm -hmm. expect a woman that has a business worth less than 20,000 or 50,000 to still be in business? Mm -hmm. I can I can imagine. So um, I, I was saying this that I, I appreciate the work that Mama Money, the organization, has done and is still doing. But you know, it makes me think that this is this is because I've heard of this saying that it's not just about giving people fish. You should also teach them how to fish. So um, and according to the World Poverty Clock, it, it's been recorded that. Over 100 million people in Nigeria are living in extreme poverty. So this begs to ask, do you actually think that one can break the cycle of poverty in Nigeria? Because I understand that one of the aims of uh, Mama Money is to break the cycle of poverty. Okay, so for us... Um like I shared, we can't sit down and fold our hands. So what we've been doing is we've been trying, like I said earlier, skilling um, um, these women. So we have women that are low-income women. We have women that are no-income women. These women don't have any source of livelihood. So how do we get these women skilled? We have, as I'm talking to you, I'm in my office, is a duplex uh, innovation hub that we created last year in partnership with Union Bank, where women across Lagos come to learn different skills for free. And mm -hmm. when I tell you skills, so they're learning vocational skills, they're learning um, business development skills, they're learning mindset shift. So they're living, you, you need to see this space, it's a creative space. Then these women come and learn for free. And so they are living their Mushin community. They are living their uh, Ijegun community. They are coming into a space where they are meeting women like themselves, a good, clean environment. So it gives them inspiration to aspire to be great. So mm. that's what you need to skill women, give them easy access to finance. So for us, pre-COVID, we used to give loans. But post-COVID, these loans, if we give it to them, most of them won't be able to pay back. So for now, what these women need is grants. So that's why we started the Mama Bees Grants for Women. And we've been giving women, like I shared, five, we've been giving women um, um, grants in um, partnership with some um, sponsors. We are women in Kano, Kaduna, um, 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 Ogun State, Oyo State, and in Lagos. They received um, stock finance. So we actually helped them. So if you are a baker, we're going to help you buy your bag of flour. We bought the vegetable oil for you. If the woman that sells ugu, ugu si soup, we follow that on Igbo market to go and wow. buy those things to help her restock. Yes, that's what we did. So that, this is the support that we can give to them. Give them, skill those who don't have um, um, skills so that they have mm -hmm. a skill to start a business the ones that already have small businesses, how do you help them get funding, easy access to funding? Then for, mm. like for us, the ones that don't have, um, that don't want to do a business, what we've done is like we created the factory. So we are telling everybody that buys Devanta dishwash, for every dishwash you buy, you are indirectly impacting a woman because mm. that means she can come to work tomorrow. So immediately you are washing your plate. It's like you're washing away poverty. <laughs> you understand? So that's the oh, message that's for us. So giving these great. women economic opportunities, they'll be able to uplift. We are hardworking. These women are hardworking. We see them. They're not mm -hmm. lazy. They just lack opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that is why Mama Money has come to bridge that gap, helping them get these opportunities. Oh, well done. So um, during the lockdown, the federal government um, said they, 
gave some palliatives and COVID relief materials and all of that. While um, that being said, the so social media went on fire because a lot of people were like, they did not get that palliative. And, and you know, I also personally never knew anyone who directly got the palliative. So how would you say, what lesson can one draw from that? How, how do you think one should better go about distributing palliatives or relief materials? Okay, so what I think they should have done differently was that we are one of the 10 NGOs that um, distributed fund, um, food palliatives to women via VSF. What they did was to identify credible organizations that had the target beneficiaries they wanted to reach out to. And they leveraged our platform where we were able to reach 250 low-income women from different communities. We gave them food. So I was, um, Mama Money was in charge of women in a more Dauphin community. Mm. You understand? So what I think they should do is, we already have NGOs doing amazing work different organizations doing amazing work, leverage their platform. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. So that's what I think, because some of us, we sent our women, before we started providing food, we told them to go to their local government, and we will have some of them on interviews. They said they got there, they were fighting, there was nothing, they had to turn back. Some said they got there, and there was nothing, nobody, there was nothing, no form of activity there. So then they came back to us. So leveraging our platform, because we're a credible platform that if you need to reach low-income women, you'll be rest assured that definitely everything that you want to give to them will get to them. Oh, that's incredible. So um, I'm just going to, in case you're just joining, um, this is the conversation so far. We're discussing rebuilding the economy of Nigeria's most vulnerable women post-pandemic. And of course, um, we, we have the wonderful Nkemo Kocha who is sharing with us what Mama Money has been up to. Um, so, you know, the conversation around um, financial inclusion keeps getting bigger by the day. And that's owing to the fact that not much of progress has been seen uh, between 2012 and now. We can only talk about 2.9% of of those who were actually not financially included before, who were financially excluded, now having access to financial resources. So why do you think, what is the problem? Why do you think it's been so, such a poor growth or progress recorded since 2012 till now? Okay. So for me, why I think um, there's been slow progress is that most of the people, if you don't have money, you can't save what you don't have. You must have money. So for those that have no income, we need to skill them. So when I mean skills, so I mean skills that, um, that are useful, skills that are useful in their communities, that with little training, they can start up like a business, a side also, something to put money in their pocket. So we need to skill more of these people. And for those who already have small businesses, how do you tailor a repayment? So if they are going to accept, do you, do you don't even know if um, they have um, available um, um, loans for, for them to assess? So some of these people, so you have this product, but your target beneficiaries, they don't know that they can assess this um, 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 products that uh -huh. you have. So building the relationship with this set of people, so your, your women. So how do you pass information to them? How do, do they trust you? So for mm -hmm. us, like I, I shared earlier, some of our women, some because of the kind of businesses they do, some pay back quickly. Some pay back mm. monthly. So if you are telling the woman that pays back monthly, that can pay back monthly to pay back quickly, she will be defaulting every week. So we have to tailor repayment to our cash flow. So understanding mm. these women, hear them speak, ask them what they want. Because the, the problem there is that we just assume, create a product and we just push it out on these women. I will start them to ask them, Madam, this product I'm creating for you, or what do you want? How will you? So that's why we had to start with grants because most of them, 
They told us, say, Auntie, we don't need this thing. We need help. So mm. building relationship with your target beneficiaries, do they trust you? You understand? So I feel we need to scale up more people, get them to trust this financial institution or organization providing funding. So for me, one thing that drives my mom money is impact. We are impact first, but most mm. institutions that are giving us finance, they are thinking about profit. Okay. So if you want a woman, if you want those at the bottom of the pyramid to become financially included, you need to have a lot of patience. You need to be patient capital. So you need to have mm. impact at the forefront of your mind. So you don't think mm. that you are going to put um, 50,000 naira and get 20,000 naira immediately. No, you need to help them walk that journey. So it's, it's a patient walk with this set of people. Yeah. 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 So, okay, some, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I, I for some. Say, I, okay. You can go ahead. Okay. So I wanted to ask about... Um, why is it that most times, most of the times, women are at the bottom of the pyramid? Do they hold very vital role in the wealth of their families as well? But, you know, why is it that they're usually at the bottom of the pyramid? So um, religion, culture has made it so because um, most times you see some women um, they are educated. I have women that are BSc holders, but if you see them, you think she only attended SS, uh, SSCE. Why? Because immediately she finished, the, she got married, the husband just told her to stay in the house. Now, the husband that used to be the breadwinner of the home is now sick. Because she left um, uh, university like 10 years ago, she doesn't have any skill. She doesn't know how to write a CV. Nothing. So you see that uh, 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 mates that are maybe men that they graduated together, you see them excelling. Maybe he has done masters. He has gone for one or two courses abroad. He has done, you see them attending different conferences, different networking sessions. But the woman, she's always in the house taking care of the family. And she's not given enough opportunities. So I think this is what has cost it. And religion too. So they tell you, keep quiet, your husband, don't, you should definitely respect your spouse, but your spouse should want you to excel in life. You understand me? So this is what has cost this for most of these women. So you find most of these women that, so most of our widows, you see them, Widows. So I tell most of the men now, you see why some of them love our program is that we are telling them that, see, we don't want you to die young. Girl. That's why we are empowering your wives so that as you bring the woman to go bring, both of you will be able mm -hmm. to live a better life, take care of your children. So that's how we are getting men. So sometimes to empower the, the women, you see the men call our organization to thank us. Wow. You understand? So we well, need so to so start... So Someone okay. here is asking, who, who are your target clients? Someone here is asking, Ossie Oz, Kings is asking here, she's, um, he says, who are your target, who are your target clients? He also says women are more, okay, yeah. Okay. So, that, so that's our the target, uh, So our target clients are low-income women. So women who have no skills. So low-income women and young girls and um, low-income female entrepreneurs. So the mama selling tomato in the market, you know, in the market. The mama selling ugu. That young girl hockey on the road. She's our target client. So how do we get that girl skilled so that she knows that with how do we make her digitally included? So that's our, our, our target client. So low-income female um, entrepreneurs, low-income young women and girls that needs to be skilled. So those are the kind of people who work with rural women. So especially we work in urban slum communities. So communities like um, in Lagos, Makoko, Okwafon, Ajegule. We, so those are the kind of communities we, we, we go there, we try to upskill their women, create economic opportunities for them. 
Oh, great. Thank you so very much, Um, um Kocha. But before I let you go, I wanted to ask this as well, that how do we get women to be better represented at the table when decisions concerning them are being taken? So we need women, um, like I said earlier, women who are passionate about uplifting other women to be um, in the room when um, decisions are being taken, when policies are being made. We need men who act as, who can act as champions for women so that knows that if um, we pass laws or if we make policies that will help women thrive, my young daughter that is coming, she's not going to be relegated to the background. So those are the kind of people we need. So we also as women, we need to make more money so that we can help more women become elect, going to uh, elected offices. So we need to elect more women to be our counselors, our governors, uh, and even our president. So we need to make money so we can also support other women who have our interest at heart to, to, to lead us. So that's what I think we need to do. Oh, that's incredible. So Osi Kings is asking the name of your NGO. It's actually Mama Money, M A M A. Yeah. And, uh, and so then Mama um, Money Empowerment Foundation. Yeah, Mama Money Empowerment Foundation. So how can people get across to you? So they can reach us at Mama Money Foundation at gmail dot com. So Mama Money is M A M A M O N I. F O U N D A T I O N at gmail.com. Oh, that's incredible. Well done for a good job. So um, I'm just going to take this comment. Um, I'm just going to take this comment. This person says, Are you in partnership with psychologists? Money is more psychological than physical. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so are you in partnership with psychologists? That, that's the question this person is asking. He says, because money is more psychological than physical. No, well, for now, we are not in partnership with any psychologist. So what we've done, so um, we have relev- other organizations have leveraged our platform. Hello, can you, can you hear me? Can you see me? I can hear you clearly. I can hear okay, you. Okay, okay. Okay, so other organizations have leveraged our platform to come reach our women. So we have organizations reach out to us to um, teach women um, how to detect maybe like breast cancer and the rest. So, um, but for now, we don't have um, that in place, but it's something that we've thought of and that we are trying to, that we, we've spoken about it as an organization. So because like some of these women, another thing that they go through, some of them go through abuses in their home. Like I told you, I shared that we do like mindset shifts when they come. So we get someone to talk to them. We created this um, lovely environment. So when they come, it's peaceful. They can talk to us. It's creative and safe and nice place for them. So but for now, we don't have um, someone in the organization that does that. Mm-hmm. And another okay. thing that I said is when women, so when we go into these communities, when they see other women like themselves that has done it, mm. they do it. You understand? So bringing yeah. women like them to share their stories. So, and like I said, it's yeah. word of mouth. So they can see a woman that used to beg is now uh, financially independent. So they want to follow her to our organization. Yes. Oh, that's that's good. Well done, well done, and we wish you all the very best at Mama Money. Thank you, thank you. All right, thank you so much for being a part of the conversation. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right then, take care. Yeah. Bye. That was our conversation with Kim Okocha. I'm sure you all learned one thing or the other. Mama Money is the name of our organization, our foundation, and they've been doing a whole lot to ensure that the cycle of poverty is broken, not just in Nigeria, but of course in Africa as well. And just like many people might wonder how impactful has this been, you should totally check their website out to check more about them. And you can also partner with them. They're looking for partners to ensure that they reach out to as many women as possible.
Thank you so much for being a part of this. I am a data Kelalu Grantian. Bye-bye. And of course, continue to keep safe.